we may be standing on the brink of a major conflict. I would love it if I'm proven wrong. The choice before us is to resolve the problems we face in life today, medical, economic, social, emotional, either through conflict or conversation. We have to decide, do we start a conflict or do we start a conversation? No government, no leader, no Masiha can do this for us. We, we the people have to make a choice to be on the side of conflict or on the side of unending conversation. This thought then brings us to the topic of the day, which is India's composite culture and Lucknow. I sincerely believe that the concept of composite culture is born out of a deliberate choice made by human beings to live life in the opposite way, opposite to engaging in conflict with other human beings. Since I know a little more about life in Lucknow and less about the way composite culture is practiced in the rest of the country, I will talk mostly about the beauty of an entire culture here of institutions that blossomed due to a conscious, very conscious policy of live and let live that was practiced over centuries by wise and often humane policy makers of the time. Those practices from that long ago continue to benefit citizens to this day even in their bruised state. Before moving on to living examples from the very attractive Ganga Jamni composite culture of the region of Awadh, let us try to quickly pinpoint the root cause of conflict. The English word war has its origin in the old German word wehren, meaning confusion. In modern times, the German word Wehrwirth does not translate as war, but it still means to be confused. And that is exactly what conflict does. It causes chaos, confusion, and hate in the heart and mind of ordinary citizens, poisoning society as a whole. Once citizens are encouraged to engage in conflicts, and taught to kill, the teacher too lives under the same threat of becoming a victim one day of its own lessons of hate. Conflict is as ancient as human existence, and despite death and destruction that it has caused throughout time, human beings can't seem to do without conflict. When political disputes erupt between different communities, different individuals, then human beings go to war with each other. The cause of most conflicts is over food, territory, or wealth, and often over all of these. Uh, similar to the Persian saying, Zar, Zameen, and Zalani. The first conflict on record is from the shores of where the Euphrates River and the Tigris River confluence. Mesopotamians on this territory have been mauled here, and Sumerians have slaughtered enemies here. This area is where Iraq is today. Now, just uh, take a minute, close your eyes, and try to travel in your mind to this part of the world. See how lush and fertile this land is. This is where agriculture was born thousands of years ago. So naturally, the first wars were over grain, over agricultural activity, over territory. The first strand of grain had first burst into a hearty meal here, here, on the confluence of the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. To this day, the natural resources of this region remain a reason of conflicts between America, the Arab world, and Europe. No, 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 no. It is 
no longer the conflict is no longer over wheat anymore but over black gold or oil this territory was always contested by iran turan ajam arab and indian empires often expanded right up to kandahar on the iranian border the territory of modern day turkey was the cause of age old rivalry between the greeks mm. and the persians both of whom at different times crossed the mountainous khyber pass to conquer parts of northwest india at different times now why do i go into all this information now why do i tell you about lands so far away from your home this is because the background of the line of nawabs who ruled avadh from lucknow for just 8 decades had converted society into a glowing example of how human beings can live with each other in minimum conflict and enjoy life and prosperity one good reason for being inclusive was the minority status i'm sure of the rulers of avadh the shia muslim nawabs of avadh unlike the sunni muslim moguls were a minority within a minority they decided to minimize conflicts with other communities including the larger sunni muslim community to which the moguls sheikhzadas afghan and pathan mostly belonged and later befriended also the european population of avadh in order to enjoy as we said before the prosperity this track of the indo gangetic lands has always offered all human beings in prehistoric times lucknow was part of the territory of the surya vanshi rulers of avadh according to one legend the land of lucknow was gifted to lakshman by ram after he returned from the 14 year exile to rule from ayodhya and lucknow is said to be a corruption of the word lakshman pur since ram is an avatar of vishnu and the cobra is the couch of lord vishnu the many hillocks on the banks of the river gomti in lucknow were populated mostly by nag worshippers before arabs afghan turkic and persian travelers traders warriors and mystics made lucknow their home and were joined later by a large group of europeans it was in 1580 mughal emperor akbar appointed sheikh abdur rahim bijnori the governor of the avadh subha or province you must know that uh, akbar had divided his uh, kingdom into 12 subhas of which uh, avadh was one of the provinces in lucknow the sheikh chose a brahman bride for himself who later on then invited a large community of brahmans from kanyakuch to live in the city and what happened the city benefited from the wisdom the the artistic and aesthetic temperament which the brahmans brought with them from uh, kanauj mughal emperor akbar had already set an example and had a diverse group of people surrounding him including todarmal to help him run his kingdom this tradition was only being imitated by sheikh abdur rahim bijnori in lucknow akbar's governor in lucknow sheikh abdur rahim bijnori was only following in the footsteps of akbar by continuing the tradition of including into their life attractive and talented people irrespective of which cultural uh, and religious background they belong to the chain reaction of this kind of goodness continued as krishna the hindu wife of sheikh rahim built a handsome tomb for him after his death surrounded by beauteous gardens dotting the skyline of lucknow 
with perhaps the first of many magnificent architectural marvels that later came up in Lucknow in the Indo-Islamic style. For 200 years, the Sheikh Zadas, descendants of Sheikh Abdul Rahim Bijnori, represented the Mughals in Lucknow from a fort called Machi Bhavan that was raised by the British and where the Lucknow Medical College stands today. Now, there is also a beautiful legend about uh, uh, the Machi or Machli or the fish emblem adopted by the Nawabs, the rulers of Lucknow. And the, the, the legend traces uh, one of its origins to uh, Persia in the time of the Zoroastrian uh, rulers, you know, who had, uh, who had adopted uh, the fish as his, emblem, uh, his, as his emblem. I think it was Khusro Parvez. And uh, so even though uh, after Zoroastrianism, Persia converted to Islam, uh, a lot of cultural uh, traditions uh, from Zoroastrian times naturally continued even after uh, the, the, the Persians had adopted Islam as their new religion. Now, uh, where the, the Machi Bhavan, Machi Bhavan fort of uh, the Sheikh stood once, um, uh, there the Lucknow Medical College stands today. And this is also the site of the shrine of mystic Shah Mina from times even before Sheikh Rahim from the uh, 15th century, I think. And it continues, this shrine continues to be the hub the, uh, today of devotees who come here from different walks of life, who are rich, poor, they are men, women and children, people um, asking for, for, for medicinal rahmat, people asking for uh, wishes to be fulfilled. What I'm trying to say is uh, the doors of the uh, home when he was alive were always open at the, at the residence of Shah Mina. And after his death, the doors of his shrine are never closed to anybody in society. So the Sheikh's others were soon joined by several groups of Afghans. And once they were able to contain their conflict with each other, everyone lived along with diverse communities like the Vaishnavites, the Shaivites, Buddhists, Jain, Muslim, European Christians, and also European Freemasons in comparative peace. You know, what I'm trying to say is that everything was not hunky-dory and uh, like a paradise in the past. What I'm trying to pinpoint is when instead of encouraging conflict, uh, a great uh, person, a great human being is one who discourages conflict and comes up with an alternative way of communicating with human beings who might be in hate with you or who might be angry with you. So if you um, encourage hate and, and, and conflict, then in my eyes, um, you're not a very nice human being. But what I'm trying to say and taking these names is some of these people they were aware that conflict is also part of human nature. So they tried to not encourage conflict, but to discourage it and show an alternative path of uh, continuing to live uh, together with other human beings. So please don't in any way get the impression that I'm, that I'm saying everything was like paradise. There were always battles, always conflicts, uh, but uh, uh, who maximizes conflicts and who minimizes conflict is what we are talking about. OK. So Kashmiris came. There's a Kashmiri tola. There is a, 
the Kayas, the, the contribution of the Kayats, who, who uh, the Kayas, the Hindus, who themselves uh, call uh, call themselves Raj Visarya, for example, is a Kayas, and he says, "I'm uh, I'm half uh, Hindu and half Muslim." So this is not uh, not because he has been forced uh, by somebody's sword or he's being forced to convert, but uh, what they mean is that uh, we are first human beings and we I have taken a lot from you and also I have given you a lot. And together we form a society. So the, the society in Lucknow was very, 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 very diverse and multicultural for many centuries, much, much, much before the academics invented uh, the study of multiculturalism. So Kashmiris came in large numbers and without the help of the bookkeeping wizards called the Kayas, it would have been impossible, not only for the Muslim, but for anyone to administer the vast lands of Avad. So I think when we say that uh, ancient India was ruled by Hindus and medieval India was ruled by Muslims, but we don't say that colonialism was a rule by Christians. We don't say that. So why, how, because in, in the Mauryan times, in, in uh, the Gupta time, there were also uh, Buddhists, you know, who were part of the court. There were Jains, there were uh, uh, Vaishnavites, there were Shaivites. So it was not, uh, when, when uh, Babur conquered uh, uh, India, he could not have uh, uh, started a di dynasty without the help of local people. He, it seems uh, he came here on the invitation of a Rajput uh, uh, king to help him um, uh, 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 defeat the, the Sultan in Delhi at that time, who was a Muslim. So Babur was, was helping actually a uh, Rajput king. So, uh, to say that uh, the Mughal rule was a Muslim rule is not entirely true because it was a rule by uh, an Indian Mughal. You know, the, all these people, uh, except for Babur, were born in India and they were all Indians. So this was a continuation of Indian kingdoms uh, from ancient times. So this is a matter of debate. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but uh, these are thoughts that come to my mind off and on, and I'm just sharing them with you. Uh, so now we, we've got a little bit of a picture of what Lucknow has always been. And now we come down to the Nawabs. So what was so special about uh, the dynasty of the Nawab that ruled Lucknow for 82 uh, years. Um, who were these Nawabs of Lucknow? And what kind of miracle did they perform in the 19th century to make the city so well known for its way of life uh, worldwide? You know, you stand in any corner of the globe and you open your mouth in front of another Indian and immediately they say that, you know, are you from Lucknow? So wh what, were, what is it that the Nawabs did that, La that Lucknow became so gorgeous? So we go back to the founder of the Nawab dynasty in Awadh who was a Persian called Amin. So now when I'm talking about Amin, a Shia Muslim resident of Nishapur in Persia, you must go back to the little uh, paragraph on uh, the confluence of the Tigris and the Euphrates uh, River. Because, you know, we also, all human beings also carry in our subconscious uh, the, th uh, the values of thousands of years of uh, civilization that have been practiced also by our ancestors. We may not know it, but we do so. So what makes the founder of the Nawabi dynasty in Awadh, 
a Persian called Amin, a Shia Muslim resident of Nishapur, a comparatively more liberal, more accepting, more willing, you know, to do any kind of a, a, a odd job to make a living in India. Uh, so you have to know what was happening around Nishapur that made a lot of uh, people leave their place of birth and go scatter uh, around the globe in search of work. So in early 18th century, Persia was in disarray. The spectacular suffer with rule in Persia was decadent and in decline. There was turmoil and uncertainty in society, making many citizens travel to other parts of the world in search of work in search of food, in search of an income, in search of making a living. So Amin too, I look upon Amin as an economic migrant in our modern vocabulary. Amin too came to India and after doing many odd jobs, he found favor at the Mughal court in Delhi as a warrior. Soon he was promoted as the Naib. Naib is a Persian word for representative of Delhi's Mughal court in Awadh in 1722. So if you are a naive, you're not the boss, but you are the vice. You are not the president, but you are the vice president. You are not the chancellor, but you are the vice chancellor. The word Nawab has its origins in the Persian word naive or representative, the vice, the number two. Amin, who had enjoyed the title of Burhan ul-Mulk for his bravery on the battlefield, um, uh, Burhan ul-Mulk was a title given to him, which means uh, ruler of the world. He made Faizabad his capital on the banks of the Saryu River bes beside Ayodhya and not in Ayodhya to avoid conflict with the with the with the city and the population of Ayodhya, which was a sacred place. So uh, Amin was, um, how do I uh, call this act of his? Uh, Amin was considerate, was, uh, uh, was uh, aware of the sentiments of the local population. So he did not disturb Ayodhya, but made an, another town about, uh, a few kilometers away from Ayodhya, called Faizabad as his capital, on the banks of the Saryu River, and which is about 80 kilometers from Lucknow. When this Persian came from Nishapur, he naturally brought with him memories of all the century-old conflicts, as well as conversations, that the civilization that he was born into had already had with uh, other civilization, and which then dissolved and mingled into his life experiences in India, giving birth naturally to a third way of looking at love and life in Lucknow. This, by the way, is also the title of my book on Lucknow, which is published by Niyogi. So I'm taking this uh, a few seconds, uh, the, uh, uh, taking uh, the opportunity to mention my book to you. It will make me very, very happy if you take a look at this book and tell me uh, what you found in it. So Nawab Sabdarjang was uh, the, the Sabdarjang, you know, the Sabdarjang of Delhi and Sabdarjang Stoon. He was actually Amin's nephew. And uh, he became, because Amin did not have uh, a son, he married his uh, daughter to Sabdarjang. And Sabdarjang then became the second Nawab of uh, Awadh. And uh, Sabdarjang's son was Shujaud Dola, born in India. And uh, Shujaud Dola uh, lived much more in uh, Faizabad and Lucknow than Sabdarjang or Amin because uh, 
ba- the, the, in india there were the battles on the field were still continuing so both amin and safdar jang were very often called for battle and so they were unable to have a permanent place of residence so they would uh, because the suba was under the care of amin he would come to fezabad and lucknow take care of the region make sure everybody was paying their taxes and uh, I, as soon as he was called to battle he would go away so it was the same thing with safdar jang who did not spend as much time in in awadh as shujaud dola now the 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 last two great battles with the british in which shujaud dola uh, participated were the battles of baksar and plazi after that even shujaud dola's life became stationary because there were no more big battles to fight so uh, shujaud dola then because he had more time uh, away from the battlefield he built fezabad he chose fezabad as his capital city and built it into a lavish uh, capital uh, to which the whole world seemed to be attracted so shujaud dola born in india was a broad minded and liberal ruler now all the liberalism comes from having his ancestors having spent time in delhi uh seen what uh, akbar did uh, all the marriages uh, that uh, took place between hindus and muslims to uh, buy peace and to cut down on the number of wars with the rajputs so uh, shujaud daulah's background is extremely liberal then he is the grandson of a persian from from nishapur where they have seen you know what conflict between uh, um, the mongols uh, and the persians and the turks does to a society so all this uh, becomes part of a person's psyche and shujaud daula uh, was broad minded and liberal because of all these values that were subconsciously um, became part of his personality and uh, he got an opportunity to practice uh, these values when he started to live for a long time in fezabad so uh, again he was very careful not to disturb ayodhya uh, uh, but to live close to ayodhya the former capital of the suryavanshi rulers of ancient india and not to disturb their social and their uh, cultural life so uh, this is from a book which is a quote but i've cut uh, shortened the quote uh, so shujaud dola what he did was he welcomed people and encouraged them to settle down in fezabad because this was a new city and uh, talent was needed to build the city into a prosperous uh, marketplace into a cultural hub so people were needed to populate fezabad in no time people of every race and creed individuals of every rank and class gathered in fezabad during the reign of shujaud daula the madarsas of fezabad acquired great fame and attracted a very large number of students from bengal gujarat malwa hyderabad shah jahanabad lahore peshawar kabul kashmir and multan now similar pol- political and social conditions were encouraged throughout the rule of all the nawabs till 1856 allowing the birth over time of a luxurious culture that was shared by all citizens so this luxurious culture was not confined only to the to the court but it was shared by the citizens as well so there are uh, uh, great many examples of wajid ali shah you know the last uh, uh, nawab the last ruler of lucknow how he once a year he would open the gates of the qaisar bagh palace he would dress up like a yogi and sit under uh, the shade of a tree 
and welcome welcome uh, uh, the the spotting should be there is some disturbance in the okay so uh, so we have tons and tons and tons of uh, uh, examples you know uh, where uh, the 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 gap between the ruler and the rule was rather narrow was uh, rather intimate during this type during this time of nawabi rule deep roots of mutual understanding among <coughs> various uh, communities in the region that had existed from ancient times was strengthened between the new population that came to live in this place devi temples were protected the suraj kan ghat on the banks of the river gomti in lucknow was renovated uh, i think by uh nawab asifuddola the son of shujaudola and a portion of the ghat was sloped in such a way so that the waters of the river could be shared with animals as well so the animals gladly accepted the this invitation and fearlessly would come to quench their thirst at the gao ghat while devotees human devotees use the east facing ghat to worship the sun so these are just the example of uh, living together with nature with uh, with with rivers with trees with uh, animals and with human beings both rulers and the rule the suraj kund or the tank of the sun uh, was revered for for its medicinal properties uh by all those who know what is good for them so you don't have to be a hindu or muslim if something is good for you wisdom lies in adopting it uh and and the and it also got i think from the sheikh sadas of uh, lucknow the suraj kund uh, got a new name called shamsi talab as shams is sun in arabic so at this time persian was the court language but even at court royalty was familiar with local languages like avdi and khari boli so if you look at the the tumaris and the writings of wajid ali shah he is writing uh, expressing his feelings not in persian not in classical urdu but in avdi so which is very beautiful the ganga jamni way of life encouraged unity amongst diversity uh, in society and invented the greeting adab from adab culture or respect because you know the the muslim rulers were were aware that they are a minority ruling over a majority population so they were considerate they did not want to impose their language and their culture upon the local people so they uh, uh, a third way was found and uh, salam alaikum which is clearly uh, islamic and muslim and jai siaram which is clearly hindu was avoided and a new form of greeting uh, of adab was encouraged from the uh, urdu word adab which is culture or respect for the other human being so uh, you know these are some of the examples but there are millions and millions and millions of examples we can spend all our life talking about how um, uh, efforts were made to bring people together and not to make them quarrel it was shuja udola who got rid of his beard for example because now um, the beard a long beard is associated with muslim men it is shuja udola who got rid of his beard and to this day mostly shia muslims do not keep a long beard uh this may not be entirely true of course you will find many shia muslim men with a beard so but i'm i'm saying that shuja udola they was not afraid of uh, getting rid of his beard 
was not afraid that God, Allah, would be angry with him if he shaved his beard. So there was a hectic exchange which was encouraged during this period between different ways of life in cuisine, clothing, and language, and between rulers and the people. So uh, very often the rulers were curious about you know, what the poor people eat, uh, what do they do for entertainment, uh, what makes them happy, uh, what makes uh, the people they are ruling uh, unhappy. So there was uh, this, this, this uh, constant traffic between what was happening at court and what was happening on the streets of Lucknow and in the deep uh, countryside with the peasants. Ghazi Uddin, of course, poverty was still there. Monarchy is a very exploitative system. Zamedari is a very uh, exploitative system. I'm not holding a brief for these exploitative, um, willful uh, institutions, but trying to say that there were some people who tried to make the most uh, even out of these, exp uh, these exploitative circumstances. So Ghazi Uddin, uh, uh, who followed as Nawab, uh, uh, he followed um, uh, Asif Adola, was an Anglophile. So by now, you know, this is now, I think, uh, uh, early second, second, uh, um, uh, quarter of the, the 19th century, and uh, Europe was uh, waking up to a very creative, to a very modern uh, uh, culture and ideas, and these uh, ideas also uh, affected life in, um, in India and in Abad and in Lucknow uh, because of all the visitors we had from uh, Europe. And also lots of um, uh, people from Lucknow were able to also visit England and they have left a wonderful, very adventurous, very colorful uh, record of their journey abroad. So that again is, uh, is a topic of interest uh, and all those of you who are interested can look up these documents and um, enjoy uh, uh, the history for, for yourself. This then is the story in brief, uh, not only of composite culture, but also known, known as the Ganga Jamni way of life, uh, which some people snigger at and feel that, you know, Ganga Jamni sounds stereotypical. But if you, if you really study it, it's not uh, just uh, a saying. Actually, we in our day-to-day -day life, I am very conscious of um, uh, practicing the Ganga Jamni way of life. So, but uh, to explain it, it sounds uh, a little abstract, and uh, you can't really uh, point your finger to it because it's not uh, as tangible as a war or a debate or you know other things that are much more obvious so this then the story is not only of composite culture that we have talked about uh, but also i think the foundation of uh, uh, secular behavior of secularism in our land indian secularism is so precious because only because it discourages conflict and it must be guarded like life. Indian secularism is special because it acknowledges that people from all over the world have enriched the way Indians think and the way they feel. I mean, what is wrong in accepting that I have uh, uh, taken from you this, that, and the other, you know? It is... Uh, it is a matter of being magnanimous, of opening your heart to different influences, which in the end enrich your life. So secularism in India implies equal, absolutely equal respect to all the different communities that 
live in this country. Indian secularism, as it appears in the constitution of India, was conceived, I think, on experiences of this land's contact throughout the ages, throughout uh, times since uh, human beings have existed with the rest of the world and on modern European ideas. And these ancient, these experiences from ancient times were combined with modern European ideas of liberty, fraternity, and equality to that. And that is the spirit that go, has gone into the words of the Indian constitution. Indian secularism is not against religion, but it showers equal respect to all cultures. According to the Indian constitution, the state does not discriminate against any Indian belonging to any community and promises no interference in the religious practice of any Indian or the decision of non-religious people to not believe in God. I mean, it's, it's okay if you don't believe in God and it's okay if you believe in God, but please, for heaven's sake, don't start destroying the life of other human beings in the name of God. How much more magnanimous can a society get? The problem is we have to, we have to practice uh, what is in our constitution. Most of the time we do not practice uh, the spirit of the constitution and that is why we are in a kind of a mess that we see ourselves in today. The Indian state does not force religious practice upon citizens, nor does it curtail the religious freedom of a citizen. The Indian state discourages attempts by any one community to dominate another community. For these reasons, the constitution of India needs to be protected by all of us, as it is the constitution that allows all of us to be who we want to be without, of course, harm or injury to a fellow Indian. The essence and spirit of composite culture is clearly reflected in the Indian constitution, encouraging us to appreciate and to celebrate the contribution of a variety of influences in our life that only help us to dive deeper into the self in quest of eternally puzzling questions like, who the hell am I? Why am I born? Where will I go after I am no more? If conflicts help you to find answers to the above queries, of course, please continue to quarrel. If not, let us not give up, please, on conversations with each other on what life is all about. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Gee. Uh, thank you for this very deep and enlightening lecture. I hope and you enjoyed thank it. Thank you for being ambassador of composite culture. Thank you for being the ambassador of uh, secularism. And we have faith, deep faith, that these things will, inshallah, continue in this country. Inshallah. Uh, I, I now request uh, the participants to come up with their questions. Uh, and, I, and I request Saket or, to take over this question and answer say session. Meanwhile, I would like to request uh, Meru ma'am that uh, some of our participants, some of even I am also very eager to meet uh, Farooq ma'am. So ah. as planned, if we can meet her and, and then we'll go ahead so and you, answer you, wa you want to have the uh, question and answer with, with ma'am? With you, of course. But no, no, but, uh, no. Do you want, my question is, uh, I will have to go into another room. So do you want to uh, uh, have the question and answer with me, with ma'am sitting there, or should we get ma uh, go to ma'am later? This is my question. Whatever is suitable for you. Whatever I think is as soon as she says, here, sit here. 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 Here,
हाँ बाहर निकाल ली ओके सो दुपट्टा दुपट्टा जी जी सो वी कैन ब्रिंग आई जस्ट हैव टू गो टू स्टेप सो आई कैन इवन गो टू द टेबल वाइल वी आर टॉकिंग जी Am I audible? Yes. Ah, yes. yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. For uh, we are having such a wonderful session. Uh, uh, we are having number of students here with us, and we are also fortunate to have uh, faculty members of our college and also different uh, colleges and universities. So, before, lovely, lovely, lovely. Before moving on to the students, uh, I request if any faculty member. has uh, any observation or question can please unmute and ask any of the faculty members thank you sarita nargis bano thank you shifa thank you thank you so much ankita lucky awesome pyal thank you no questions uh jogeshwar yeah. thank you neha thank you rifsha thank you reema thank you anamika thank you eram thank you atya thank you niharika kalani shanti swati manish kavita Ashi, thank you very much. Alisha, Varun, Roshni, thank you for lending me your ear. Debashi, thank you. Kumar, thank you. Dupatta. Before before we move on to uh, students, let me take this opportunity to ask a question. Uh, uh, as you were uh, talking about uh, the secularism, uh, yes. that it is. that uh, we cannot uh, we are the one it is uh, uh, the word in our country which uh, we uh, actually is there or we take it as the respect to all the cultures all the religions right but in the current situation in the current scenario what is your observation ma'am that is this term what we really know or study about secularism is being followed and if it is not then how to change it now i think you know um, we can we can only since uh, it is the will of the large majority of people that a certain um, government should be at the helm of affairs uh, you know we can we uh, we can do nothing you know it is only through the ballot that you can uh choose a more humane a more benign a more well meaning uh people in power that is one thing we can do and while the indian constitution seems to be in the grip of uh, people uh some of us do not have then we can only uh, Try to save the constitution by hook or by crook, you know. Even because the constitution is even dearer than my personal life. Because if if uh, if I live and the constitution is made into, you know, like the Islamic Republic of Pakistan or the or the Saudi government or you know, just for. one culture and one religion um it's not good for my children you know so i am prepared to protect and save the constitution um uh, even if it means a threat to my life because in the hope that i might not be there but the constitution will survive to uh, make life better for my children but once you have given so much of power through the ballot box to someone you have to suffer that person you have to 
what can what can you do you can't do anything till you go back to the ballot box and vote for somebody else this is the democratic constitutional way of being a responsible citizen isn't it yes ma'am so ma'am uh, what do you think what do you feel is the reason of this definition the changing of this definition of secularism in the present time what has been the reason according to you yeah i don't know I, I, it's it's because um, there are some people who don't like to live with some other people you know so uh, we have to teach you know when you are born you are not born with love for other human beings you are just born a, a newly born child is not um, it doesn't occur to the child to uh, love somebody whoever gives the child food whoever uh, uh, takes pain away from the child that child will love that person right so we as we get older and we become adult and we become conscious of our uh, beauty as uh, a human being we have to teach ourselves certain values like love uh, consideration for other people to be able to love other people like you love yourself these values have to be taught to yourself before you step out i mean how how horrible is it that to save my life i am ready to lynch another human being you know what what kind what kind of a mentality is this so when you have people who only see their culture their language and refuse that their life has been enriched because it touched base with other forces other creative forces in the world if they refuse to believe that and they think they were born like this and they want to die like this they don't need anybody else then what can you do i we can only have conversations like this that is why i like to talk more to students rather than uh, adults because at least i feel maybe the students who are the future citizens of the country will will get something out of what i am saying i don't know so uh, thank you ma'am thank you so much uh, i have a question a very simple question as such Yes. I would like to combine my question with a question asked by Vedanjan Seth. Vedanjan yes. asking that I am fascinated to know if the Lucknow chicken speaking style plays any role in this wonderful composite culture of Lucknow. In yes. That, does chicken play an important role in the composite culture of Lucknow? of course yes because uh, it seems uh, the the chicken curry originated um, by merchants who sold uh, the dhaka muslim i don't know if they were hindu or muslim but one legend is that there was a favorite garment uh, of of a citizen and she did not which which uh, got torn which had a hole but she loved that garment so much she didn't want to throw it away so it was given to a, a, a rafugar to mend the hole and the rafugar was so aesthetic that uh, instead of putting a patch uh, he embroidered it you know with a pattern and the pattern was very beautiful and it seems this is the origin of the chicken curry embroidery now you come back to the manufacturing so you know the different activities that go into uh, making a, the embroidery and to selling the embroidery that uh, those activities are divided between different communities 
so you have you know the block maker who makes these beautiful patterns on wooden blocks then those blocks are uh, uh, dipped in uh, neel neel ink which that ink is made by another community so this way you know if uh, if my job is threatened as a block maker my future is linked to the ink maker to the uh, uh, to the uh, garment maker to the tailor to the uh, to the shopkeeper and this linkage is what prevents me from fighting with you because if i uh, if i uh, hurt you then my my rosy roti my business will also be hurt so this was i think also a very conscious policy of um, you know like in singapore when uh, the founder of singapore he forbid uh, neighborhoods where which were only muslim which were only uh, tamil which were only christian chinese he whenever a government building came up he said the, on the first floor will be chinese family on the second floor will be hindu tamil family and so on and so forth so we have to live with each other we have to believe that my future my safety my security is linked to the security safety and prosperity of my neighbor if i think by killing my neighbor my life is not disturbed then of course i will kill my neighbor does it make sense yeah yeah certainly ma'am uh, ma'am this is last question and i would like to ask this we we have read a lot about uh, nawab wajid ali shah participating in lot of theatrical and dance activities yeah. he himself was a good dancer a great pattern of art and dance forms uh, yeah. and and you are also associated with theater and all so do you see theater and 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 more than that we saw delhi and we saw literature we saw we saw shayari flourishing in delhi but yeah. we saw different performing arts flourishing in lucknow more better than delhi i mean to say so being a theater artist you yourself do you think that uh, that patronage of wajid ali shah and this theater and the dance forms they also play a, an important role in the composite culture of awadh of course they do because you know it was also circumstantial as i said you know by the time uh, shuja ud daula became the nawab you know the british had defeated the the indian armies of uh, the joint indian armies you know tipu sultan was finished um, uh, uh, bengal was uh, taken by the british so this was a time when the battles had decreased and the threat of the east india company uh, taking away more and more wealth from the local people was looming large so one of the policies of the nawabs also was let's uh, spend our wealth on the city on ourselves on uh, activities that make me and my my subjects happy if i don't spend that wealth then the british the east india company will take away that money so uh, and because they had time and because uh, they were of persian origin and you know you must know how rich uh, the culture of persia is in ta in in uh, matters of poetry especially so these nawabs although they were indian and born in india but they came from a background already a very rich cultural background so they were good warriors they were good poets they were you know they were multi talented people but of course a lot of them had local indian mothers so this combination of uh, uh, i think the persian and the indian was very very beneficial to uh, to the blossom blossoming of a very rich culture here so because there was there were no wars to be fought and all the wealth was from agricultural activities uh, the nawabs really had not much to do you know because the rulers were always the kings were always engaged in war so since the wars were not there 
uh, they diverted their attention to uh, to beauty to architecture to uh, poetry and that is the the reason you know and then this combined you know with the invention of the printing press you know the uh, uh, nasiruddin shah had the first printing press to the mutiny uh, the uh, the publishing industry flourished under neval kishore so neval kishore who was uh, obviously from his name you know he's a non muslim but he is the main patron of uh, urdu who saved urdu manuscripts from vanishing because he he took the oral um, recitation and published them into books thank you ma'am thank you so much yeah uh, this should i take take the yeah i will introduce you now to the gulabo sitabo actor <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you she i don't know how good she is able to to ye ye bacche hain kareem city university can you see ma'am yes can you yes. see okay assalamu alaikum ha boliye hello ma'am aadab kariye aadab aadab करीम डिपार्टमेंट है और सारे बच्चे हैं यहाँ स्टूडेंट्स हैं बहुत सारे सब नहीं देख रहे हैं हेलो हेलो आदाब भैया कैसी हैं आप हम बिल्कुल ठीक हैं आ, हम लोग बहुत दुआगु हैं अच्छी रहिए और कुछ और अच्छे कैरेक्टर्स हम लोगों को देखने को मिले जी जी बिल्कुल मिलेंगे इनशाला और वो मैं आपका इंटरव्यू भी पढ़ रहा था जिसमें आपने कहा था कि मैंने अमिताभ बच्चन को बहुत तंग किया तो वो बहुत अच्छा लगा सुन करके कम से कम कोई है जो अमिताभ बच्चन को भी तंग कर सकता है बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आपका भी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया भैया थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सो मच आप सबका भी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आप खुश रहिए शुक्रिया मैम थैंक यू इफ देर इज एनी वन एल्स हु वांट टू से समथिंग पूछना हो आवाज आ रही है हाँ बिल्कुल आ रही है आवाज और वो शेर भी सुना मैंने आपका जो आपने शेर पढ़ा था उसको हम लोगों ने अपने वीडियो में भी यूज किया है वो बाकी से मेहरू बाबू वो शेर आपका सुना देंगे आप कौन सा मैं आपको इनको याद नहीं होगा इनको दिखाना पड़ेगा वो वाला वीडियो ठीक है भाजी थैंक यू बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया जी तो ये आ, सवाल नहीं पूछ रहे हैं इज इट डिस इंटरेस्टेड ऑडियंस और और कोई और कोई फिल्म कर रही हैं आप हाँ मेहरून मिसा कह दीजिए मेहरून मिसा और कोई फिल्म कर रही है तो थैंक यू वेरी मच बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत मजा आया आ, बहुत शुक्रिया मैम जी 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 कीप इन टच गुड लव टू खुदा थैंक यू मैम आपको 
कोई कुछ कह रहा है अस्सलाम वालेकुम मैम दिस इज आफरीन मैम आफरीन खान हियर फ्रॉम रांची यस मैम आई सो योर मूवी गुलाबो सितावो मैम your acting was amazing over there and let me tell you ma'am you were better than amitabh bachchan and oh, this yeah. is what ma'am i was telling my son that ma'am is doing much better acting than amitabh bachchan ma'am let me tell you your acting was amazing ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you so much oh thank you ma'am so nakhim ji was afreen afreen जो आपकी तारीफ कर रही है ये सच नहीं है आई थिंक इट वाज लाइक एन ऑर्केस्ट्रा इट वाज एन ऑनसेंबल कास्ट एवरीबॉडी प्लेड योर पार्ट्स ब्यूटीफुली अ मैम इट वाज अ ग्रेट कोइंसिडेंस दैट आई सॉ योर सिनेमा मैम 3 4 डेज बैक एंड आफ्टर दैट आई गॉट दिस मैसेज फ्रॉम yeah yeah bhai that you will be uh, coming and you will be meeting and addressing us this is really great mm-hmm. like, this is beyond your <laughs> it was a great honor ma'am to meet you great honor great privilege for us shukriya ke bahut bahut shukriya sabko ata thank you ma'am aap you all log abhi await karenge ma'am hum log ji Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you,